Narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder that affects the brain's ability to control sleep-wake cycles, which can greatly affect daily activities. Excessive daytime sleepiness is a major symptom of narcolepsy, and it's characterized by the persistence of sleepiness, regardless of how much some sleep somebody gets at night. If left untreated, narcolepsy can interfere with psychological, social, cognitive functions. In this Neuro Neurology Live Peer Exchange discussion entitled Management of Narcolepsy and Excessive Daytime Sleepiness, I'm joined by a panel of my colleagues, all experts in the field of sleep disorders. Together we're going to discuss the use of new therapeutic options, review the latest clinical trials, and provide practical perspective on how the recent data might, might apply to your clinical practice. I'm Dr. Michael Thorpe, Director of the Sleep-Wake Disorder Center at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx, New York, and Professor of Neurology at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Elon Avedon, Professor in the Department of Neurology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and Director of the UCLA Sleep Disorders Center in Los Angeles, California. Dr. Evelyn Honig, Executive Director of the Narcolepsy Network in New York. Dr. Karen Maskey, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School and Director of the Neurology Sleep Clinic in the Department of Neurology at Boston Children's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, and Dr. Russell Rosenberg, Chief Science Officer and CEO of Neurotrials Research in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much for joining us. So let's begin. First of all, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rosenberg about excessive daytime sleepiness. Can you tell us a little bit about how do you distinguish this? Everybody is a bit tired at some time of their life. How do we know when somebody really has a problem with excessive daytime sleepiness, and how does that sleepiness affect them? Well, well, thank you, Dr. Thorpe. Yeah, this is an interesting question because I think everyone here on the panel today could say they experience tiredness or excessive sleepiness from time to time. So, you know, it's highly prevalent in our society that people are sleepy. And so it is a, a difficult task or an important task to determine where is the normal amount of sleepiness that many of us really experience to where it becomes a point where it's really a clinical matter that requires seeing a physician for the, the issue. Um, you know, we, we shouldn't forget here on the panel that the, the, the most common reason for being excessive sleepiness is just chronic sleep deprivation. This is self-imposed mm -hmm. deprivation. Now we're looking at the TV, we're looking at the internet, we're doing and, and cutting our sleep short. But when it gets to be a point to a point where it is interfering with work, with relationships, with other social activities, um, and then in situations where an individual has to stay alert, like whilst driving or doing some other activities where the individual must stay awake to, to be safe, then it's, it becomes really a problem, mm -hmm. a serious problem. Now, Karen, is it easy to recognize this in children, or is it more difficult to pick up excessive sleepiness in yeah, children? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's more difficult because kids oftentimes look hyperactive or impulsive or inattentive when they're sleepy. So sometimes I hear, you know, that they were misdiagnosed as ADHD um, okay. and, and not recognize the sleepiness. Sometimes they have behavioral components, they're more irritable or they have more aggressive behaviors when they're sleepy and so that catches people's attention. And parents usually pick up on this and notice like if they took a nap, they actually get a lot better. So that's quite different to the adult where the adult tends to get more and more tired and lethargic as they get sleepy but sometimes children can become hyperactive. Yeah and act it out, and that may be a sign. So how, how can, what tests can we use, Russ, to be able to tell us if somebody has uh, excessive sleepiness? Yeah, I think, I think many people wait way too long to address their sleepiness or excessive sleepiness before they go to a, a physician. And, and the tests that we can use in the clinic include things like the Epworth Sleepiness Scale. This is an eight-item questionnaire where a patient can fill it out and they're asked how likely it is they're going to doze off in a variety of situations. It's a 
fairly well validated and reliable measure for adults. There is a, a child version, of, of course. And then there are, are tests, so that is a self-report measure. There are a few tests that we can do in the sleep laboratory that help measure the uh, amount of sleep pressure or sleep propensity. One of them that's commonly used is called the multiple sleep latency test, in which an individual has already you know, undergone an overnight sleep test. They stay the next day and then do a series of naps at two hour intervals and we measure how fast they fall asleep in those two hour intervals. Of course, they're staying, we're, we're encouraging them to stay awake in between those naps. And then we're also looking at what type of sleep they might have had during those naps to make some decisions about a diagnosis. So it's a very useful tool. So you, you need to have a sleep center to do that. So you need a sleep specialist to be involved in doing the MSLT. Sure, correct? sure. And these tests cannot be done at home. Right. I know there's, there's a, a, you know, a lot, big increase in using home sleep tests, but you, know, you can't really measure the excessive sleepiness in a home sleep test. They must come into the sleep laboratory. Now, what about the Epworth sleepiness scale? Is this something that neurologists or primary care physicians can give to their patients? A absolutely, and, and it's something that, uh, you know, I've seen it on, on iPads or certain pads in the office where people complete that before seeing the physician, uh, or they can complete it online. So, yeah, I think it's very useful. It, it's very easy to interpret it doesn't take a lot of uh, fancy uh, arithmetic. It's basically you add up the scores, and if the score is 10 or greater, that's considered abnormally sleepy. And we see patients who are, are terribly sleepy, excessively sleepy, you know, scoring up, upwards of 15 or greater. So, um, you know, this is, you can't really diagnose someone with a specific sleep disorder from the Epworth, but it does give the clinician uh, a sense of, you know, just how sleepy this person is across a, a variety of situations, easily done in a neurologist's office or a primary care uh, professional.